Hi everyone, it's Dave. I'm going to show you how to create a hopping event from start to finish and hopefully answer a lot of questions you might have along the way. So I'm signed in. I'm going to go to my account and I'm going to go to my organizer home page. This is where I can see the past events that I've organized, my upcoming events, and where I can create new events. I'm going to hit create event and I see this screen. What kind of event do you want to create? In Hopin, there are two types of events, open and scheduled. Open is kind of a virtual office plan where you can move into different rooms or areas of the event. We call them segments. Those segment types are mainly the stage, sessions, and networking. The stage is kind of uh, where you do a webinar or you live stream an actual stage at your event and you put hopping on top of it and make it a hybrid event. But a stage is where up to 10,000 people can view a presentation, a speaker, a keynote, etc. A session is sessions is an area where you can set up different roundtables in the event. Users can create their own roundtables and up to 10 people can join or sit down at a roundtable. And uh, moderators are chosen and I'll show you how to, how to set these up here soon. And then we have our networking area, which is one-on-ones. If you want to uh, set up a room for people to meet people one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you'll choose networking. So I'm going to create an event with all three. We'll set it for today, starting at noon, ending at two o'clock. I know my, my face is in the way right there. Let's move it. Ending at two and I'll choose my time zone. When choosing your time zone, make it for you, the organizer. It's just for your convenience so that the times are easy uh, to choose because your hop at hop and attendees are going to be coming from across the world so and it will be localized to their time zone uh, if you've noticed this tag over here that's because there's a hop and event going on right now that I've joined called pitch perfect and perfect and I can join that event if I wanted to but I'm just going to dismiss it here and go on creating our event really quick the difference between public private and hidden public anyone can join it's shown on uh, Hopin's website as a public event, kind of like a, a, a listing for different events going on. Private is only joinable by email invite only. And then a hidden event is joinable through a hidden link, uh, which is what I'm going to do for this event. I hit create event. It builds the event. Oh, I got to name it. Um, how to create a Hopin event. And we'll go ahead and set it up and hit create. And that brings us into the organizer dashboard. Now when you get here, it might seem a little uh, overwhelming because uh, it does. there's a lot of options in Hopin, a lot of customizations, but I'm gonna show you uh, one by one how to set up an event. The easiest way to set up an event is to set up, start is to start with tickets. Add a ticket, uh, this is how attendees join your event. It is impossible to join a Hopin event without tickets. So I'm going to create one here. You can make it free or paid. We'll do a paid event and I'll make it $100. We'll create a hundred of them and now we have one ticket and we'll add another one. VIP secret. Make it free and hidden. All right, for these ticket types, couple things here. You can designate who meets with who. Say we had another ticket such as um, organizers, we'll make it free. Now we have three different ticket types that people can choose from. In the networking area, you can choose who meets with who. So right now the organizer, anyone with an organizer ticket type will meet with all three of these ticket types where right now VIP secret only meets with VIP secret and general admission will have them meet with organizers but VIP secret they only meet with each other um, to add a coupon to a paid ticket you hit that tag icon on the right and here uh, you name it discount and you set the new price of the ticket. So I'll do $50 half price. And boom, our discount is applied. So we have our ticket set up. And now we're going to move to registration. 
Registration page is the landing page that where people, when finding out about your event, deciding if they want to buy a ticket or not, this is the page they're going to see. And I'll show it to you the finished product when we're done setting this up. First, I'm going to add an image. This is pretty critical because right now our, our event hasn't had a thumbnail, but once this image is uploaded, uh, it's working now. My computer uh, has a lot going on. Um, but I'm going to do an about section for this. So for this uh, event, we'll say uh, grab your ticket to learn how to set up a hopping event. Okay, our tickets, we got our image going. We're going to show uh, the number of attendees at our event and I'll hit save. Our image is uploading and here it goes. Now you can see our image there as the thumbnail and technically we could go live but first I want to customize the reception page. The reception page is the first thing that people see when they join the event when it's live. So I'll say welcome, thanks for coming. And we'll hit save there. Now we're ready to go live, and this is the dashboard where you can see analytics and revenue and registration visits to your page. To view your registration page, page, copy this link, and this is the link that you'll send to folks to sign up to the event. Hold on one sec. Oh, it has to go live. Right. So I hit go live, and now our event is published. Now it's ready. Copy the link, go to a new tab. Here we are. Uh, this is our registration page. You can see it, the different things that we've customized here. Uh, I'll join the event as an organizer. Check out. And then boom, you're in. I should get an automated email uh, that I have been registered for this event. And because the time is current, we now can join this event that I just created. I'm not going to just yet because I want to customize it a little bit more and show you what else is possible. But right now we have a basic hop and event that's set up and that works. So here are the segments in Hopin. This is what's most interesting about Hopin. I set up a stage, I set up meetings, which is networking and sessions. In this section, Let's go, I'll start at the top and then go down. With Hopin, if you're live streaming an event, a physical event, and you have a video production team that you want to add Hopin to, you want to stream to the stage from your physical stage, use the RTMP URL and stream key information here. One thing that's unique about Hopin, if you're just going to do, say, a webinar or a fully virtual event online, you can use the backstage. The backstage is a secret area where the speakers and organizers of an event uh, join. So I've opened a new tab with the backstage and I'm gonna start the session, hello, by adding my microphone and camera. And I'm gonna join the session and here we are. Um, this is the backstage. I haven't broadcasted to the stage yet, but once I hit this green button, what you see in the backstage will be shown on the front stage. A couple other things about this. You can see the time that's left in the event. You can see who's watching. Obviously, it's just me. And then we have our private backstage chat here. If I just want to communicate to speakers uh, just in the backstage. But then I can also keep an eye on the global chat, like what's happening uh, with everyone else at the event. I can set up a poll right here and dish it out to everyone that's at the event and then here's also uh, a registration of everyone who's currently attending. I can share my screen and it will look like this. I've shared my screen. If you double tap, uh, ooh, that's inception -y. If you double tap it, it increases the size or decreases the size of a uh, screen. And then when I do go live, Let's do it. I'm going to hit go live. Broadcast has started. Right now, the, the backstage is streaming to the front stage, but 
there is a 20, 13 to 20 second delay. So I'm going to hit this button to view our stage as, as an attendee. And this is what it looks like. So the delay is currently happening. Um, and you can tell that the stage is live because a stream is just about to go through. I'm going to exit out of it really quick, um, but I do want to show you. This is what it looks like as an attendee. Uh, and right now we're looking at the stage area. The stream is going to be turned on soon. Our stage as, as an attendee. And and now I'm going to turn it off. So that's the backstage. I'm going to stop broadcasting and go back to our uh, organizer dashboard for this event. Closing out the backstage. Really quick before we go, this is where you would invite people. Say you have a speaker and you want them to come to the backstage this is the link that you'd share with them for them to be able to join the backstage here. Cool. All right. Also, you can invite speakers here to join. Uh, and then it would show up in the, uh, the schedule for meetings. The max, this is where you set the maximum time during the networking uh, segment. You can set how many seconds you want each meeting to last. Uh, I like to do 600 seconds, 10 minutes. People get quality time uh, to meet with each other. And then lastly, you can set up your round tables. This is in the session segment, so I'll show you where it will show. We're in the event. I'm going to jump into our event here. Here in sessions, I didn't uh, create any, and you can see that there, there's none here, but watch what happens. Um, you can set them up here, or if you're an attendee, you can set one up here. So we'll do um, this. Um, let's chat. Set the number of people you'd like to be able to sit down at the table. It can be 1 through 10. We'll do 10, and I'll moderate. When you're moderating, you have the ability to kick people, uh, let people in and kick people out. And this is a round table. It's going to look a lot like the uh, backstage. And I have to start the session. Hello again. Choose my devices. I start the session. And now I can invite anyone to come. And if we go to sessions, you can see the, the table here. And up to 10 people can join this. And up to 300 people can watch it. There's also in a session when we join session chat if you want to have a conversation just privately in the round table and that's not not public um, you can do that as well this is where you can share your screen in a session so sessions are great for uh, focus groups breakout discussions um, and different small group participation during an event say you say you you give a talk on the stage and then you want people to discuss a question you can set up a round table with a question uh in the sessions area and then people can join and meet with other attendees and have a good conversation so back to our event dashboard um i'm going to add a sponsor this is what it looks like when you add a sponsor we'll pick say canva i like canva We'll choose their logo and their website. We'll hit create. And then they should be there. Let's add another sponsor. Say Twitter. We'll add their logo, their website. And now let's go back to our reception area. And you can see there they are. Twitter and Canva sponsored by and there's me as the speaker um, so our event is starting to build as we add more and more details from the uh, the organizer dashboard lastly not lastly um, there's a number of things you can do with your event but one of the things that's optional is the expo area if you want to add vendor booths um, say intercom is sponsoring we can uh, set up some information about intercom and 
let's do, I think that's it. Let's just let's see if that works. Now we have a booth with intercom. Now look at our event. Uh, we'll hit refresh. And the Expo Center has now appeared. And intercom is right here. And the Expo Center, what this is for at an event is if you have handouts or resources or vendors or products that you want to share with people, uh, this is the place to add them. And it would populate here and you can jump in and this is where people can download resources. They can ch chat with the salesperson. If someone's here, you can register interest. Uh, a vendor booth is a great way to add products and services to sell and offer discounts at your event. So that's the expo area. We added sponsors. Uh, you can invite users directly to your events by adding, uploading a CSV file here or one off, uh, invites via email. If you add someone, um, you'll see their name and pending their status. Then you can view who has signed up for your event here. Um, and you can export all your attendees as a CSV to upload to your email client for lead generation and use after your event. If you want to say, stay in touch or send messages before your event, you can do that as well. So that's Hopin. That's how you set up a full event on Hopin. And if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. I hope this was informative and helpful. Uh, we'd love to hear any feedback and we look forward to what you have to create with Hopin. Thanks for watching.